why the self-help industry is so keen to perpetuate these kinds of stereotypes? Why are they so invested in the idea that men should be this way and women should be that way? It may be true that a lot of women want to hear this, but that's because they haven't heard the alternative. And that's why I wanted to write this book, to give them the alternative, to make them think differently. Um, because honestly, I mean, I just think that there's something really, really, really twisted about the fact that women are taught to, to approach men as the enemy, that there's really no point in trying to control love uh, in such a way that you won't get hurt, because there's always the risk that you will get hurt. I mean, you can't control that risk. You can't prevent yourself from getting hurt. And so I wanted to stage an intervention <laughs> to the self-help um, culture. It kind of came from a personal crisis, from a relationship crisis that I had been having. I was actually in the process of writing a completely different academic book, um, and I found that um, because I was having problems in my relationship that I wasn't able to concentrate on that book. I just couldn't write it. So then I, um, I decided to write The Summons of Love as a substitute. I just sat down and wrote it in like four months. Um, and then later, way later, I went back to the initial academic book, and by now I have finished that. But I guess both, uh, what I'm saying is that both of these books um, arise from a very personal place. Um, and so once I had the more academic book, um, I realized um, that I wanted to reach out to a more mainstream audience in the sense that I realized that the ideas that I had were probably applicable to a lot of people on a more uh, personal level, um, not just the academic intellectual level, but really on the gut level, personal level. I decided that it was really time for someone to make an intervention in the contemporary self-help industry because I felt that the self-help industry was sending um, readers, particularly, fe particularly female readers and young female readers, absolutely the wrong message about love. Um, first of all, the self-help industry seems kind of abnormally invested in um, ideas about gender that I think are incredibly outdated and retrograde. And, uh, absolutely anti-feminist also. I, found, um, I, I, I kept thinking that the self-help industry was almost like 50 years or 60 years behind the times in the sense that a lot of the ideas that are being propagated in the self-help uh, books are really ideas that um, seem to belong in the 1950s or the early 1960s and definitely not in you know, 2010, 2011, which is when I wrote the books. The second major region, uh, reason was that I think a lot of these books, uh, a lot of the self-help guides portrayed romantic love as this kind of a game to be played where there are winners and losers. Uh, and I wanted to absolutely get away from that mindset. I think that there's really nothing as counterproductive as thinking about love as this kind of a war of the sexes that you have to either, you know, you have to somehow figure out how to win or you're going to be the loser. I thought that that model of romantic love was really not very useful in the sense that, I mean, why would you want to turn your potential lover or your lover into your enemy? Why would you want to approach it as a game where you would want to somehow defeat your partner? I mean, isn't that sort of the antithesis of love? The notion that there's something really problematic about thinking about romance and romantic love and men and, 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 men and women in terms of war and combating each other. And I was making the point that actually, when you look at people, when you look at men and women in t today's society, um, it's much more helpful to think about what it is that we share than what it is that divides us. Um, because I think that fundamentally, men and women are both human beings. Uh, I mean, there are individual differences. Um, there are all kinds of differences that divide all people from each other. But the idea that men are this way and women are that way um, and that there's some sort of an antagonistic relationship be between them is just really uh, simple-minded and reductive. I mean, when you think about it, if you, if you approach the person in front of you with the expectation that he's going to be a specific kind of person just because he's a man, you're leaping into all kinds of assumptions about that person that may have nothing to do with the reality of who that person actually is. I mean, you're making assumptions based on gender that may have nothing to do with who that person is. My point is basically that um, when we approach men and women with this idea that 
they are completely different, that men are from Mars and women are from Venus, and they have nothing in common, and it's this antagonistic warlike situation. When we do that, we actually become incredibly stupid about relationships, to put it bluntly. We just become stupid because we are no longer seeing the, the, the person in front of us. We're not seeing the specificity of that person. And if we are not seeing the specificity of the person, how are we supposed to relate to that person in, an, in any kind of a meaningful way. I mean, if we kind of fall into these cliches and stereotypes and caricatures, then we can't really relate to each other in any kind of real or meaningful or authentic way. My whole premise is that there's something really problematic about the idea that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Uh, um, I mean, if there's one thing that I really, really, really dislike about the self-help industry is that it is trying to turn what is uh, really a stereotype, a stereotypical way of looking at the world. It's trying to turn it into something that is kind of a scientific fact, something that has been proven. Um, and in so doing, it is making us incapable of thinking about relationships in deep or meaningful ways. So the case for falling in love has three main messages. The first has to do with the idea that um, gender and gender relations are much more complicated than our self-help industry is trying to make them out to be. Um, I do not believe in this kind of binaristic idea of men this, women that. So I'm trying to get away from that. Uh, the second point has to do with the idea that love is not meant to be controlled. It's not meant to be played as a game. It's not meant to be... Um, mastered, and the more we try to manipulate it, the more we try to master it, the less we get out of it. And the third point um, uh, has to do with the idea that a relationship failure doesn't necessarily mean that you have failed as an individual. I'm trying to get away from this idea that only relationships that last are worth something, because I think that a lot of relationships that do not endure actually are worth quite a bit in the sense that they teach us a whole lot. My hope is absolutely that my book will uh, induce or uh, induce people to think differently about um, love and gender and romantic relationships. And I'm speaking specifically to young people. And I know from my teaching that a lot of young folks are absolutely open to this message. I know that a lot of them already kind of know what I'm saying. It's just that they, I think that they just need someone to say it. <laughs> I, I feel that when I'm talking to audiences, um, say young audiences of 20-somethings, you know, uh, they are usually nodding their heads from the moment when I start talking because they already kind of know um, what I'm talking about. Um, and they are attracted to this message. It's just that they haven't had anyone articulate it for them in a way that would make it coherent. And they are bombarded by the self-help industry that is trying to tell them that they're, su they're supposed to do X, Y, Z, when in fact they're already kind of doing A, B, C. And I'm telling them doing ABC is the right way to go. So when they hear that, they, they are actually very ripe to being, to being kind of um, um, re-educated in the sense that it's very easy to change their minds because they already kind of know that this is actually a more flexible and more fruitful way to think about love and relationships. When you fall in love, everything is suddenly more exuberant. Everything is more vibrant. The whole world takes on this completely different hue where you're walking through the world and everything is just so vivid in a way. And there are very few experiences in life that give us that kind of an experience. And so that I think that's one reason um, that we are so obsessed with uh, this idea. It, it gives us this almost like a transcendent experience that we can't get any other way. And of course, there are all kinds of other reasons, like the quest for wholeness, for instance, the idea that um, there's this kind, of an, uh, this kind of annoying lack in our being. We always feel like we're not quite good enough, we are not quite enough. And we have this kind of an unconscious hope that the person we fall in love with will somehow fill that void in our being, will make us whole, will make us um, feel like finally we are enough. And I definitely, definitely do not think that we can determine ahead of time how people are going to behave in love, even ourselves. We cannot know ahead of time how we're going to behave. And that's one of the problems with the self-help industry. It's trying to give us this idea that we can know ahead of time how that person is going to behave just because he's a man or he's a woman. 
And my point is that that's just absolutely ludicrous. I mean, that's never going to happen. I'm not going to be able to predict how someone is going to behave just because he happens to be a guy. So no, uh, I don't think that we can, um, um, we can predict our behavior. And I also don't think that it's uh, in any way productive to try to force ourselves into some sort of a box, like the, appro uh, the appropriate box for how you're supposed to be when you're in love or in a, in a relationship. That just kind of stifles the whole thing and makes it lifeless. And it's the very essence of love to make us feel alive.